ever wondered what braid fishing line looks like when it fails or what it looks like when your fishing line fails? Hi, I'm Warren and you're watching Toy Fishing. In this episode, we'll be comparing three samples of braid and we'll be looking at images ranging from 20 times magnification to a whopping 2,000 times magnification. How awesome is that? The categories we'll be looking at are number one, cut piece of braid with the scissors, number two, a snap piece of braid on a tensile tester, and number three, a snap piece of braid within a fishing rod. The braid we'll be looking at today is a 100 pound 8x braid or an 8 carrier braid. Just quickly, what's a carrier or what does 8x braid mean? You've probably seen 4x, 8x, 12x and even 16x braid. A piece of braid is made up of multiple carriers all interwoven together into a desired weave for each manufacturer. Each carrier is made up of a predefined number of single fibers bundled together to form a carrier. Before we get started, let's just look at an individual piece of braid. This is 20 times magnification, 50 times magnification, and 150 times magnification. Here you can see the individual fibers in the carrier all bunched up and the various carriers woven in a pattern to produce the braid line. And this is 400 times magnification. Here you can see in this very high quality braid how uniform in size and distribution the individual fibers are within a single carrier. And this is a piece of braid at 20 times magnification with the carriers teased out. You can also see the blue braid dye that has not penetrated the inner fibers in the various carriers. This is fairly typical of most braids. Oh, and just one more thing, quickly, let me just explain what photo stacking is. As we progress in the video, you'll start to see images of a thousand times and up to 2000 times magnification. Each image you see will be many, many photos all stacked together to form a single image. Due to there being a very shallow depth of field on a microscope for each individual photo, the software on the microscope takes a multiple images and everything at a particular level in that single photo that is in focus will be kept and everything else discarded. So you end up with all the best bits of a stack of photos all on top of each other forming a single photograph. How clever is that? Right, let's get started. We'll look at a piece of braid that has been cut or sheared with the scissors. The first image is at 30 times magnification and this is 80 times magnification. You can see here that as the scissors cuts through the braid, initially multiple carriers are cut in a straight line, then the final two or three are then at a slightly different angle. This is visible on many high carrier count braids and thicker braids bit like trying to cut the hair that's all bunched up in a ponytail. It all goes a little bit skew at the end. And this is 150 times magnification. And this is 400 times magnification. We've actually taken a measurement here and the individual fiber is approximately 18 microns thick or three quarters of a thousandth of an inch. And what's also interesting to note here is all the individual fibers within a single carrier tend to be cut at the same angle. Remember that for later. Right, let's take a look at a piece of braid that's been pulled to destruction on our tensile test machine. Basically, just a broken bit of individual line. This is the rear section of the line at 30 times magnification. You can see some of the fibers failed a long way away from the main break area. This sample was about two inches long. And this is the front section at 30 times magnification. You can see the fibers broke in various places, also with the very end showing all the very last fibers breaking in a much closer proximity as you go towards the tip. Right, this is 50 times magnification. And this is 80 times magnification. You will start to see these bulbous mushroom-like ends at the very tip of each individual fiber. And this is 100 times magnification. And this is 200 times magnification. 
You can also see here a few wispy areas with some coming out the ends of the mushroom details and some randomly splicing away from the side of a fiber. And this is 300 times magnification. Again, rather a lot of fibers here all breaking at the same time and all showing various warped mushroom ends. And finally, let's take a look at a piece of braid line that has failed or snapped within a fishing knot. We will look at two separate samples for the knot braid failures. Right, this is sample one at 30 times magnification. This is so interesting. Check this out. Do you notice similarities with both the braid cut with the scissors and the single line break samples we saw earlier? Let's take a closer look. This is 80 times magnification. In this area, you can clearly see three or so carriers that have been sliced through at a set angle with a few areas showing cut fibers with some bunching together like here. And in this area, you can see all the bulbous mushroom-like features that we also saw in a single line snap. Right, let's zoom in on this area. This is 200 times magnification. All this area is showing evidence of cut braid. Right, let's look a little deeper. Let's go and look in on this nodule right here. That is 700 times magnification. The fibers are all cut off in an angular slice direction here and seem to be slightly fused together at the tip. Okay, let's look at the tip as this is slightly out of focus. This is 2000 times magnification. You can see two fibers here clearly showing evidence of being sliced, especially on this one here. Look at that nice angle cut. Okay, let's look at sample two of the braid knot failure. Here we can see two areas very clearly. One showing evidence of being cut or sheared, and this area mostly showing evidence of a single line snap. Right, in sample one, we focused on the cut region. Let's change things up and focus on the bulbous mushroom DL. Let's take a look here. This is 80 times magnification mainly showing bulbous ends cut at all different lengths on multiple carriers, similar to what we saw in the single line break. Right, that is 150 times magnification. How cool is this little sucker over here? <laughs> Let's go and check him out. Right, that's 400 times magnification. He certainly looks like a mushroom shape to me. Right, 1,000 times magnification. How awesome is that? You can see the individual blue dye droplets sitting on the surface of the fiber. Wow, it looks as if the end of the fiber is straight and normal. Then all of a sudden, boom, it's a massive flat mushroom detail, almost as if it has imploded with the random piece of fiber that has just kind of peeled off here. All right, let's see this 2000 times magnification. Not as in focus as I wanted, but you can see the crazy surfacing patterns in a totally erratic shape, looking a little like the surface of a burnt piece of paper. Fracture analysis. Let's try and sum up what we've seen and learned. In a piece of braid cut with scissors, everything was straight to a point, then with the last few carriers being cut together at varying angles, with no evidence of any bulbous mushroom details. Then we looked at a snapped single piece of braid. We observed a longer section of line with multiple breaks in fibers spread along the entire length, getting denser as we get to the very tip of the line. We also noticed various mushroom bulbous ends on all the individual fibers. And then we looked at a knot snap. And this is where things really do get interesting. So you've heard me go on and on about how sharp a piece of braid is. So if we now take this knowledge we've gained, we can begin to understand exactly why knots fail. So let's look at the Albright knot, where we know all the loading is at the back of the knot. This is where the main line wraps around itself all the way to the back of the knot, then changes direction, passes over itself, and then runs through the middle of the knot and back up the main line. It's almost as if braid is its own worst enemy. So now on this sample, 
we put in excess of 60 to 70 pounds load and the first thing it's going to do is reach a point where it's going to be put under a shearing load and want to cut itself up. Right, this is the good stuff now. So depending on where any one carrier is positioned, it may get the brunt of this load with a few fibers cut, then a whole carrier cut through to a point where it almost stops and then the force changes as the load is trying to redistribute itself. Too many single fibers have been cut with maybe one or two whole carriers cut. Then the remaining carrier is struggling to take that load all fail under a tensile load, similar to that of a single piece of line failure, but a lot closer together and showing more of a centralized break rather than a slightly longer fracture over a larger area. So basically, a knot has both a shearing load initially and then a tensile load to cope with. And a piece of braided line on its own is only under a tensile load mainly. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. You can tell I did. So I'd love to do a follow up on this video, looking at the stresses within these areas and discussing how these nodules or bulbous mushroom details actually form. And also explaining why if we understand this material we all hold dear as our braid fishing line, you'll begin to see that if you can protect an individual carrier within a fishing knot, you will inevitably be able to design a new or even improve on existing fishing knots. Tight lines and thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe and please, if you've got time, check out our website. And also drop us a message below in the comments if you enjoyed that and you want to see more about the science side of things in fishing knots. I also wanted to say thank you to a good friend of mine, Ben, who arrange access for me with the microscope so we could get all these great images so thank you for that right waffle sessions haven't done one of these for a while look fishing knots braid line really interesting stuff man it's it's incredible really it's a bit like um uh the game of rugby you know you got you got two you got this uh, thing they do uh, in in the in the game when uh, someone calls a penalty or something um and you get like a scrum down basically you got eight guys from this team and eight guys from this team and they're all interlock kind of like a weave in a, in a braid line they're all interlock and each each team of eight guys has all got a very important thing to do within that scrum and it's very very technical especially at a higher professional level and they kind of push in in that and each one's important and then as soon as you get one of the guys on one of the scrumming side that's um, that gives way or there's something wrong or he slips or whatever the case is man that that side ends up getting scrummaged over and the other side get the ball you know it's it's kind of game over yeah so exactly like that in a fishing knot you know you've got all these uh interwoven carriers and within the carrier you've got all these different fibers and as soon as you get a carrier cut off like we do in these fishing knots i mean you've seen like whole carriers just sliced to bits um or, or, or a bunch of fibers all go at the same time you know you've got as soon as one of those go or two of those go or a whole clump of fibers go all that pressure and loads put on onto all the other carriers and then they just fail so that initial cut that you get within the knot depending on the design of the fishing knot is the killer man that is the damage done you've only got to damage a few of those fibers within the braid line and, and it's game over so the sharper the braid line is um, I mean, I don't even know if you could measure that, but the sharper that stuff is uh, and, and the smaller those fibers are, uh, I, don't, I don't know, there's, there's quite a lot going on there, but I'd, I'd really like to look into it in a lot more detail. So, um, yeah, again, like I said, if you if you guys want me to go, go into this and look into all the science of this and... Uh, um yeah it's it's really really interesting you know and and, and uh, yeah teamwork teamwork's a, a, an amazing thing you know you've got yeah it's i, I need to stop now <laughs> i'll go on all night thanks for watching and uh <laughs> take care <laughs> enjoy the fishing you're probably getting a lot more fishing than i'm getting done so uh anyway cheers man bye now